24-year-old Simon Bell is an events coordinator from Tadley in Hampshire. My mates call me lucky because I'm fat and ginger. <laughs> 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 Simon earns £20,000 a year and his debts are a staggering £25,000. Simon's totally addicted to football. It's a passion bordering on obsession. Just go out, get a ticket. But don't worry about the consequences. To it. Just go and get a ticket. Just go and get a train. Just go to football. Go to football week in, week out. Simon goes to every single Chelsea match, no matter where it is or what it costs. It's time to call in the professionals. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will target Simon's formidable spending. You are going to have to start doing some really serious, serious thinking about what's going to give. Occupational psychologist Mark Hopkins will look at the behavioural patterns that have forged Simon's over-the-top spending. This is about showing you that you can do whatever you want, however you think you're, you might not be good enough. You are going to be able so to do I it. I can do whatever I want, and I'm walking that way. That's stupid. Simon Bell is in deep trouble. His debt is £25,000 and his spending habits are breathtaking. Over the next four weeks, he'll be given advice to turn his life around. Before they meet Simon, experts Mark Hopkins and Jay Hunt want a little background information. They've wangled the keys to Simon's house and they're hunting for reasons for his mammoth debt. Oh. While Jay will look for where the money's going, Mark will concentrate on why it's going. Here we go. Right. Chelsea. Football mugs. Chelsea. Chelsea. Ah. Oh. Definitely a football thing <laughs> coming through, I think. <laughs> Let's see what's in his fridge. Beer. Right, I think you can definitely tell a gent lives here. <laughs> what is it about <laughs> Bacon this? Bacon rashes. <laughs> Jumbo size. Definitely. Everything has to be so big. Oh, look. You see, that's interesting. Mother's Day With card. lots of love, Simon. I just wonder whether he actually lives here with his mum. Yeah. Oh, my Lord. Now we wow. know where the money's going. It's slightly surreal that yeah. he is 24 years old. This is like walking into a 14-year-old's bedroom. That's just what I was thinking. Isn't exactly, it? yeah. Look at the little single bed. Mm. <laughs> I know, I just had a quick glance. I mean, what they're doing is they're, they're a really close-knit bond. Just, just from looking at that, you know, they really look like they're together. And it's like there's nothing else. Yeah, there's completely. no girlfriend. If you were a woman and you walked in here, you'd be out that door quicker than the blooming fastest striker <laughs> Chelsea's ever seen, let me tell you. Yeah, that's true. Aha, uh -huh, look. His statements. Yeah, look at these. <gasps> 17,000 pounds. The problem, I think, is going to come when we go, OK, reality time, Chelsea is going to have to be cut down and condensed. I don't know whether he's going to work with us on that. You know, I think it's going to be tough. Yeah, so do I. Bank statements in hand, the full horror of Simon's spending is about to be unleashed. Simon Bell lives in Tadley, Hampshire. He earns £20,000 per annum as an events coordinator. Simon's using credit cards to live the high life. But at 24 years of age, he's heading for the gutter. His debt is an astronomical £25,000, and his spending habits are out of this world. He's there behind the goal, um, throwing his arms in the air, and so euphoric, you know, when they score a goal. His mates share his passion, but not his bad habits. Simon's spending can be ridiculous sometimes. Like Chelsea, they go away Saturday, Sunday, drift into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday sometimes. I don't know what else there is out of life, to be honest. <laughs> I know that I need to change my ways. I don't want to do it. I, if I do do it, if I do do it, I'm going to hate it, probably. Having pored over his statements, Mark and Jay have pinpointed Simon's two main indulgences. It's time for Simon to face his addiction and meet the experts. Hello, Simon. Hi, Hi. Simon. <laughs> How are you? I'm really nervous. Nice so. to meet you. Hi, uh, I'm Jay. Jay You're right. Simon. Hi, Simon. This is Mark. 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 Yeah, Simon. You're right. Now, can I borrow that rather tasteful yes. Chelsea scarf? 
because if it's okay with you, what I'd like to do is just blindfold you. Right. And then take you inside, because we've just got a couple of things okay, we'd I'm like to show you. What's going on. Is that all right? Oh, okay. Well, then you won't mind then. All right. Okay, stand there a minute. Okay, walk forwards. Right. And then go up a step. Now, take the blindfold off, walk in, <laughs> and <laughs> we'd like you to get in your own football net. <laughs> so in you go. Can you squeeze in there? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> right, all right. There's over a hundred footballs, one for every £100 Simon spent last year on his favourite hobby. Well, last year you spent £10,964.50 pence on football alone. I'm surprised by that. Did you know how much, know much you spent much. on football? I thought it was about half of that. Mm. <laughs> so you thought it was about five grand a year yeah, you yeah, spent yeah. on football? It's over ten. It's been quite a lot of money, but I hasn't it? I can't keep doing it. <laughs> yeah. Jay and Mark have another surprise in store for Simon. This time relating to his second favourite hobby. And have a look <laughs> at all this drink. Now, we have worked out that you spent £5,902 last year in the pub. So that's not necessarily all that you've drunk, it's your mates as well. But that is right. the total spent on drink. We've got some shares in a pub. So you can have a sip while you contemplate how we're going to cut down on this. Well, it's actually the equivalent of seven stone of body weight. Or, is it? Yeah, it is, oh, which is quite a lot. It back, I think. <laughs> so you're going off it now. Because <laughs> if you add that onto your tally that you're spending on the football... That's my salary. That is yeah, your salary. salary. You've gone on two things, yeah. booze and football, yeah. and absolutely nothing else. So, Simon, what we're going to work out is how much money you think is the minimum amount that you can live on realistically for the next seven days. But before we work that out, what I wanted to ask you is how much money you think you get through in your average week on non-essential goods. I think I probably spend about 200 a week. OK, £450 and 32p. And that is what it looks like. On what? Well, um, you tell me. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's the thing. <laughs> Must be football and beer, I suppose. Now, the next seven days is going to be the new budget. Okay. How much do you think? Um, I'm going to football on Sunday. Although my train is already paid for, match ticket is already paid for. So if I say that day about just really drinking in the pub and things, about, about 100. See, I'm quite tempted to give you that. I'm going to Cardiff on Sunday. I can't go the whole day. Just... <laughs> I'll die first. OK. Can I have a few more? 25 quid. Jay, that's really harsh. I was expecting about 50, though. I thought if I say 100, I might get half, not a quarter. <laughs> It's 48 hours into Simon's spell of cold turkey. For the first time in his life, he's thinking about what he spends. I've not bought a single thing at all. Not one little drink, not any little snack. I haven't been out for a pint. Oh. <laughs> Five days in and miraculously, Simon has 24 pounds remaining, but not for much longer. Quid, isn't it? <laughs> Another pint down for Sunday. I can't be drinking. It's only Welsh beer though, so I'm sure I'll manage without it. <laughs> the time has come for Simon to examine why he's overspending. Psychological coach Mark Hopkins is keen to get him talking. To be so obsessed to the extent of making yourself £25,000 in debt is really worrying. So I really want to find out why it is that Simon's so tied into the whole world of football, because it's actually jeopardising his whole future, and it is the single cause of his debt. Just want to start with a really plain and simple question. Why do you think you are £25,000 in debt? 
Because um, I just love football too much. Why is it football and why is it Chelsea? In 88, 89, that was my first season. It was Old Division 2. How old would um, you have been then? I was seven or eight that season. So um, I think my dad first took me that year. And it's just sitting there, in a, when you're that young and you're surrounded by fully grown men who are so involved and so passionate about something, it just really affects you, it just influences you, and you see your dad like it as well. So you mentioned your dad a number of times there. Can you just talk about that a bit? My parents got divorced, and I remember I went to the my first game with my dad and his new wife. That was the first so, game you went to? Yeah, yeah. And what did that mean to you that day? Oh, it's brilliant. It's brilliant. We, we won 1-0. It's, it's fantastic. Would, would you ever, or have you ever thought that Chelsea could be a surrogate dad for you? Um, <laughs> it's a bit like a family, I think, yeah. And it is a way of preserving my relationship with my dad. But it, it, I suppose, not consciously, but it's like I'm saying, don't worry, Dad, I'm still doing what you brought me up doing. I would suggest that part of the way you live your life is about trying to do things for instant gratification. Yeah. It's all about looking for the happy, happy experiences. Perhaps because the divorce did hit me hard when I was younger, or, you know, I, I obviously regret that it did happen. Perhaps I just think I don't want those sort of emotions in my life, perhaps, so I don't have them. Yeah, so the experiences that you get from Chelsea and football is something that helps you deal with not feeling those yeah. negative emotions. Well, it's lucky I support Chelsea then, where it is so positive at the minute, <laughs> not like yeah. QPR or something. Yeah. I find it really interesting that Simon Spending is directly linked to going to football with his dad. Although he says he doesn't dwell on the divorce, I think it's clear to me that as he's got older, what's happened is that the buzz of football is really a continuation of the happy experiences that he had as a child with his dad. I think that the divorce was actually a, a really painful time for him. It's the final day of Simon's cold turkey budget. He's travelled to Cardiff for the charity shield match between Chelsea and Arsenal. With his train and match tickets already covered, Simon's out to sink the remaining cash down his throat. On a match day, Simon can blow 70 pounds on alcohol. This time around, he'll have to cope with just one third of that. If he succeeds, it'll be a minor miracle. How much have you got? 21 quid for the entire day, and that's it. You're skin, and you know you are. You're skin, and you know you are. You're skin. Comes out. 25 grand, and it still comes out. 25 grand, and it still comes out. Just beat Arsenal again. Come on! Champions! Victory kicks off a long night of celebrations, and the last thing on Simon's mind is budgeting. Got my cards, I'll put a few beers on that. I'm not gonna get lashed. Sorry, Jay. Sorry, Mark. But I'm at football. It's showing if I was putting on a silly budget at 25 quid. Luckily, Simon's mates come to the rescue. Today is day seven of cold turkey. Back from Cardiff. Had a good day. I'm lashed up. And I've done it. To clear his £25,000 debt, Simon needs to curb his manic spending. To show him how, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has drawn up a long term budget. So, Simon, how did you get on your cold turkey? Easy, really. I did it. Did you? Did it, did it. no problems. Um, how, how difficult was it? During the week, it wasn't too much of a problem. Sunday, I thought it would be a problem, but then everyone yeah. knew what my situation was, and they, get, they got in the spirit of it, and they just kept buying me drinks all day. And... OK, well, this is your new monthly budget. OK, so the Chelsea season ticket stays the same, yeah. OK, because you're paying for that every month, aren't yeah. you? The additional home league match costs are two hundred and twenty-one pounds. What, what's that? What's the additional? That's things like in your pub. in the pub, how you get there, how you get home, having curries on the oh, way okay. back, all of that. <laughs> and we are going to cut that. 
yeah. to £85. But I spent that in one day. Well, you're not going to be able to. Simon's season ticket covers all home matches. Home, UA he can afford limited spending money for these games, but can no longer justify any away games. That's zero. So that is going to save you £783 a month, which is going to start paying back those debts. The first test, really, is going to be Wigan on Sunday. First game of the season as champions. You have no money at all to get there or buy your beer or anything else. There's zero. So for me, the test is, are you going to be going to Wigan on Sunday or not, given that you've got absolutely no money to fund anything around it? You are going to have to start doing some really serious, serious thinking about what's going to give. OK, I will do. I'm going to have to. I haven't really got a choice. But, yeah, like you say, Jay, I'm going to hopefully sort it out. Two days later and Simon has fallen off the wagon and straight onto the train, making the 200-mile journey to Wigan. With only £85 allocated to football per month, Simon can't afford the £25 away ticket and usual £70 bar bill. Not that he's thinking about that. It's another Chelsea triumph, and Simon's over the moon. Jay said I shouldn't be here. Last minute winner. Sorry, Jay. I don't care how much it costs. It's worth every single penny. Yes! Mark wastes no time meeting Simon to find out what's behind his lack of commitment. It's about proving to yourself more than anything that you can do other things. Because, yeah, you say you want to be more future focused, you know, and you're changing your life. But actually, what you're doing is still playing the same scripts in your head, which is, I need to do something that I know I'm going to be successful at. Yeah. Yeah, and all I'm, what I'm saying to you is, in terms of moving forward and being more successful with your life, Sometimes you have to move outside of that comfort zone and push the boundaries exactly. of all frontiers. Go, I'm just happy to live my life the way I am, you know, because I, I really, really enjoy my life. And so that's why I haven't gone out and tried these other things because I've not wanted to do it. Fair enough. But I, I would say at the moment you're 25 grand in debt yeah. from living your life that way. Yeah, so I would say that's unacceptable to be doing that. Yeah. So I know where you're coming from, but actually, until you stretch your comfort zone, it's going to hold you back from moving into the future. It's easier said than done. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm finding out now. You know, and that's what I'm here to help you with. You know, we take you into that next level. We're talking about the next level. Let's yeah. push you forward into the next place where you feel some fear. Yeah. I've already felt fear. Let's feel some more. It's scaring me. <laughs> if Simon's afraid of what Mark has in store, Jay's plans are already underway. Until now, Simon has rejected Jay's advice on living within his means. Today, she reveals a new approach to ease him out of the expensive, lager-soaked routine of match days. OK, so we're going to try something new. What we're going to do is get you to have a personal training session on the day of a match. No, okay. no! Oh, yes, oh, yes, which will do two things. One, hopefully, the feeling of well-being will stay with you and you will not be quite so tempted to neck back 20 pints. And two, because you'll be doing personal training on the same day as a match, you'll be in the pub for less time, therefore well, tempted less. Well, there's no time to do personal training and go to football. Well, you'll be cut down on the pub time and we'll be getting up earlier. Well, no, because I've got to be in, in the pub for 11. You haven't got to be. Haven't. Nick, well, would like to be. OK, Jay, would like you're... to be. No, you've gone too far. No. Come on, I'm going to introduce no. you to somebody. <sighs> Jay has enlisted ex-Queen's Park Rangers footballer Danny Maddox to assist her. How are you doing, Simon? Nice to meet you. He's thrilled to be here. <laughs> oh, thrilled good. to be good. here. He's stitched up, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> right, Si, you're doing, what, 15 to 20? 20 yeah, pints in a session. probably over a day's well, recommended intake just I've, on beer, isn't it? I've got a little present for you. Do you realise this is what you're carrying? <laughs> Danny. This is what, you know, you're putting into your body after 15 pints. Oh, that's disgusting. It's disgusting, so, you know, a tub of lard. <laughs> OK, so oh, I don't know what you want to do with it, if you wanted to slap it on your waist and, or your hips and that, cos that's where it's going mm. when you're, when you're disgusting, drinking it, you know, it. So. Told you it'd be fun, Simon. <laughs> good. Good, keep going. Another ten. Keep going. That's good. Back into my hands. Good, Simon. Up you come. 
good. That's what I'm looking for, all right? Keep going. Brilliant. Yeah. Well done. Oh, I'm shattered. Right. Already? Well, done that. <laughs> We're going to be doing a bit of boxer size. Hooks. Good. Duck. Whoa. Good. Keep going. <laughs> Nearly there. Keep breathing. Keep, there. Keep that going. Stop. Oh. Well, done. well done. Good work. How are you feeling, Simon? Oh, I thought I was fitter than that. <laughs> that is I, hard, though. I think it's the beer from Sunday coming out with me now. <laughs> Would you consider doing a session to delay you getting to the pub and starting the whole ritual of the drinking and spending? No, I, I wouldn't get to the pub later. I'd get to the pub normal time, sort of opening time, but I wouldn't be hammering a beer all day. I'd just uh, take it easy. So one thing we are agreed on, then, is that doing physical fitness means you're not going to feel so like going and having 20 pints. So we're going to absolutely aim to cut down the number of pints on match day, yeah? Easy to do that, Jay. No props. You can rely on me. <laughs> At £25,000, Simon's debt remains critical. Mark believes Simon's overspending is due to lack of self-confidence outside of the football pack. Mark wants to show Simon he's stronger than he thinks and capable of breaking through his comfort zone. He meets him in London to set a very public challenge. Thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm freaking it. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, we spoke the other day and I told you I was going to take you out of your comfort zone. What I want you to do, Simon, is to be a guest compare at a London comedy club tonight. But this is about taking you out of your comfort zone, it's going to be something that's going to be really good for you. I really want you to go for it. I, is... I live my life in a comfort zone. What's wrong with that? Everybody does it. Everyone just... I want to go out and enjoy my... All I want to do is go out and enjoy my life. That's all I want to do. Yeah. Just live a nice, easy life that I know I'm going to enjoy. This is about showing you that you can do whatever you want. However you think you're, you might not be good enough, you are going to be able so to do I it. I can do whatever I want, and I'm walking that way. That is stupid. Simon, come on. Let's, let's just talk about this. This is no different, yeah? You don't have to think about this any differently than improvising when you're sitting in the crowd and when you are Ging up 30,000 people, or however many people it is, to sing a song, because that's what you do, yeah? Can't load, but... Simon's task is to introduce Danny McGinley, the headline comedian. To get to grips with what's involved, Mark gets them to meet. Danny, yeah? Yeah. If you were going to introduce Danny, let's just... <laughs> let's role-play, yeah? If you're going to introduce Danny now, what would you say? How would you do it? Oh, he's nuts, isn't he? We'll do it. Yeah. Show me what you, you do. Well, I just came on, I said, right, we've got Danny on, he's from Australia, so we've got the ashes tomorrow. So do a rain dance, get a draw and win it. But, but see that? <laughs> I've seen MCs <laughs> oh, do that at comedy yeah. clubs. Oh, and yeah. that, it does work, seriously. Oh, I, I just and it really that. actually benefits me because the audience will be loose, they'll be happy, and you'll actually, you will be doing your job perfectly as a compare because it's your job to get the audience ready. You don't have to be funny, you just have to get them ready. And if you get to do the rain dance, mate. That'd be sweet. That would be good. Mark has enticed Simon backstage, but will he dare to take the mic? Applause to welcome Mark. This content is a uh, first night on stage on Brooklyn at Damaroy. Only be here two minutes, could be worse. You could have a scotch egg for a head. Um, <laughs> right, next on stage tonight, we've got Danny, all the way from Australia. He's over here for the Ashes. So, any Aussies in here tonight? Yes! Only, one Aussie? <laughs> one Aussie tonight? Is that all? Many English? Yeah. English. English, that's what we like. Right, he's over here for the Ashes. As you know, only five days of rain will win the Ashes. So, with English on your feet. On your feet, up you get. <laughs> Come on, that's not enough, that's nothing. I want to see you doing this. Come on, we need five days of rain. That's all we need. Welcome Danny from Australia. <laughs> Let it rain. God. Mate, you did it. That's the main thing. That is the main oh thing. Oh, my God. That and you feel good a... about it as well, though. I was such a strop. I was so... Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was really good. Yeah, I didn't know... I didn't realise the emphasis put on me. And if I'd have known... See, this is it. If I'd have known, I'd have had longer. <laughs> I'd have done a few minutes on there, rather than just, like, I don't know, a minute or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, nice one, mate. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> well done. You did fantastically. <laughs> really well. I really think that comedy night 
was a big turning point because I was absolutely bricking it. Because I've been living in such a comfort zone for all my life, it was just, it was such a massive test to be taken out and just thrown in the deep end. And I come out of it buzzing. So it's like, well, just do more things like that, you know, rather than just living the easy life and just plodding along day to day. Why? Because you come out with such a massive feeling. <laughs> It's match day. The old Simon would be on his way to London for pub opening time. The new Simon is treading a cheaper and healthier option. At the moment, I'm, I think I'll just go to football and have a couple of pints and that's my lot. I don't really want to go and get lashed up. My body's a temple. <laughs> it is now anyway. Never used to be. The post-match party is when it usually kicks off for Simon. Today, he faces the lads and resists all temptation to tumble into his old routine. So how's the gym today, Lucky? <laughs> <laughs> We've beaten Arsenal. It's about 7 o'clock in the evening. I've had two points. What's wrong with that? That's good. Taking control of his spending has had a knock-on effect. Taking down my football gear, then, I suppose, today. Or well, at least most of it. I'm trying to mature my bedroom away from the, the kids' sort of teenage years. <laughs> I'm, uh, I don't know, I should move with the times a bit. So, it's coming down. It's like turning over a new leaf, getting rid of all this stuff in my room and just getting my finances in order. I think I'm finally growing up. <laughs> Look at them all, flipping loads of them. Simon has reached the end of his time with Mark and Jay. The experts have arrived in Tadley to see if he really has moved on. So, Simon, we've come to the end. How are you feeling now? Oh, yeah, I'm pretty chuffed. Yeah, it's all right. What do you think you've got out of this? <laughs> um, I think I've realised that... Oh, well, I've re realised I can't keep on living this carefree life, just not thinking about consequences of things. You know, I've got to take control of my life more. So if Mark and I come back to see you at the end of the season, are we going to find this continued success? Yeah, no, I reckon so. Because then when you see, like, I'm saving money, what it was, my first payday within doing, within doing this budget, mm. I realised that, hang on, I worked out my finances and I'd, I'd paid back almost 600 quid. Mm. And I was like, blimey, I didn't even know, I, I, it was just, mm. I didn't realise I'd already done it. When it's all cleared, that's mm, it. Exactly. My life's just going to be brilliant yeah. after that. Long may it continue, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Easy. <laughs>